Roger Hurries, my son Hurries Fund. What are your current thoughts on Canal, either Red Dead or possibly Med Dead? Well, that's a really good question. And, you know, I was going to, it's Herzl's 150th birthday, and I was going to do some Herzl books because he was a really uh, very complicated character in terms of his environmental vision. But um, he really gets the, the copyrights or the patent rights for this notion of taking advantage of the height differential between sea level and the Dead Sea and <coughs> utilizing it for, for power and, and other things. Um, look, uh, the Dead Sea is in very, very bad shape, actually. The government of Israel just created a, for those who don't know, just to give you a little environmental update here, there's a paradox because on the one hand, the northern basin of the Dead Sea is shrinking. It's going down 1.2 meters a year, but that's not like it's retreating one point. That's the height differential. It goes back much further than 1.2 meters because it's not exactly a, a 90 degree angle there. So it's retreating much further, and we're literally watching the Dead Sea disappear. And ironically, the southern basin, which we call the Dead Sea, but for anybody who knows anything about it, really realizes that it's nothing but a quarry or a, a mine for, for, for potash and the like. But that's getting higher every year because the Dead Sea works, pumps water out, it does an evaporation process to take out all the, the, the minerals it needs, and the salt, which we don't care about, settles, and that's about 200 millimeters a year, which means every five years the Dead Sea southern region goes up a meter. And so they keep building these um, uh, salot, um, these um, walls or the um, berms uh, up higher and higher and higher, but eventually the water's coming up and the hotel owners raised, uh, filed suit. It went all the way to the district courts. You, government officials, you have to do something. In five years, our lobbies are going to be underwater. And in fact, we're already pumping out some of the water. So it's this great. We've made more of a mess of the Dead Sea than you can you can imagine. So we have a come and now, as a result of the Supreme Court case, a, um, a government corporation's job is the Chevrolet Haganot Yamamelah, the Company for Protection of the Dead Sea, and they're trying to do something about it. And after two years of work and 50 million shekels of advice from Dutch engineers, and this one they realize, oh, we should have an environmental. Advisor. So uh, actually, I'm, I'm the, there's three of us that are advising them, and I, so now the last six months, I've kind of you know, it's, it's not a pleasant experience because it's just, oh my gosh. But so getting to your question, we've got to think outside the box. There's no question that the uh, the Dead Sea. Uh, we cannot be the generation that sits and watches the Dead Sea disappear. The options are fairly finite, and one of them is this notion of a red dead canal which would take water, actually the pipe and the conduit kind of bring in there, is the one which is favored by our Jordanian neighbors. Now, the alternative in terms of the environmental agenda is, well, why don't we just sort of decommission the national water carrier, thank the Mikorot company for 50 years of service, but say it's done its task, now we have desal, and bring the water back in a natural flow and let the Jordan River once again be deep and wide and chilly and cold and all that stuff like that. The only trouble with that is Jordan ain't going to let it happen. If you live in Amman, Jordan, you get water once a week. And God helped the Jordanian housewife who didn't do the laundry the day she gets water and forgot to fill up the, the, the tanker on the roof. She's, just, she's out of luck. They had dirty clothes. They have a real acute water scarcity. And I can't imagine that they're going to let water flow the distance of the Jordan River for some sort of aesthetic benefit because we don't want them to let the Dead Sea. That's not, they're not going to let it happen. And I've been talking about the Palestinians who claim riparian rights to the Jordan River and to the Dead Sea. And I'll tell you the truth. The, the Palestinians, and with some justification, when they get those rights, and they'll get them because we already recognized them de facto in the 1990s, they're going to say, well, what about our Dead Sea Works? In other words, the, the Dead Sea Works are responsible for 15% of the loss of water. They're going to say, we want to set up our own too. We, we need to have an economy there as well. So we're going to have to bring a lot more water there somehow or other. And the World Bank has invested uh, an outrageous sum of money to do a, a um, cost-benefit analysis and a environmental impact statement invested $15 million, then the uh, Water Commissioner of Israel said, ah, they're asking the wrong questions, so he's investing no, no 10 million shekels. We should have a lot of information in a year or two. So I'm not going to have an official opinion, but I think that environmentalists would do well to recognize that sitting and doing nothing is not an option. To let the Dead Sea disappear, I think, is irresponsible, and I hope that we can um, use ingenuity and international financing and cooperation with our neighbors to, to bring the Dead Sea back to life. Do you have any specific um, uh, I give a lot of recommendations for the southern basin and getting the level down there, uh, but in terms of building the water up in the northern basin, I'd really rather wait to get the World Bank report. There's some questions about the water chemistry, whether the waters of the Red Sea would create a level of gypsum, which would turn the Dead Sea white, and all these other concerns. It should be in about six months, and then I'll be very happy either to agree with it or disagree with it. So I think best to wait. Otherwise, I did a thing before, I remember what the second was, but. 
or not in big hurry, so like one, two, three, four, please. Uh, Liat Won from the Kibbutz Program Center. So I have two questions. One has to do with the Dead Sea. I just thought about it. Your thoughts about an immediate solution to the Bol Anim, which I don't know how to translate to English. Sinkholes. Sinkholes, which, which I know is a serious issue. Um, and the second thing is about your uh, last point, uh, demography. Uh, what about Israelis who leave Israel, that Rihat Mukhot, that kind of problem, how does it correlate with what you were talking about? Okay. Um, in terms of sinkholes, nobody really knows what to do. It ha sinkholes are this bizarre phenomenon, except for anybody who reads the Parshat Korach knows it's not so bizarre because it's happened many times in the war. Earth opened up and swallowed people whole. If tractors and the like uh, have got in there. But basically it has to do with the fact that as the water table dropped and then the, the fresh water replaced the salty water and then it, it dissolved, they, 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 we, they think they know what the reasons are, but there's literally hundreds of holes and the and the, the date or groves of Ben Gedi have been abandoned. Now the Jordanians are finding on their side. It's a, it's a real problem. I think all, uh, we have to refill up the Dead Sea. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it's that, that's a symptom. I don't think all you can do is be very very careful when you're walking around the Dead Sea and don't go out without a flashlight. That's my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I tell my daughters, I guess. Um, the uh, the question about uh, the the brain drain in Israel. I, I'm a professor at university, and it is real. To Israel's credit. We do have a mandatory retirement age in universities of 68, like it or not. So unless you're bringing in a whole lot of grant money, you're out to pass when you're 68, so that we can accommodate the new, young, bright ones and bring them out. Out with the old, in with the new. But it's still not enough. Um, look, I mean, uh, we need people in Israel who are <laughs> creative and innovative and all that startup nation stuff. And um, and so uh, I think it's... It, behooves the country to increase the number of academic positions, to create all kinds of incentives to bring back uh, these people. I think that, for the most part, uh, from my experience, of, uh, I have friends that it, this totally speaks to them, whatever, even as they live in uh, the United States, they're still much more interested about what goes on the Knesset than what goes on in the House of Representatives, and uh, their hearts are still there, and if we can only provide them with the kind of professional challenge, and even a modest salary, I think everybody's willing to go down in terms of salaries, uh, we could bring them back. The present uh, finance minister has expressed uh, desire in creating such programs, and whether it'll be enough. But I don't think anybody in Israel doesn't want to have see those those people back, because that's that's uh, that's our future. It's going to be you know we don't have the natural reason. We have some gas now. But let's not be over over excited. Well, about we haven't we haven't become a United Emir Arab Emirate affiliate yet, although. Um, but but we're going to have to do it with the uh, you know with the, with Yiddish Akop, and that's what's going to be this for. I think it's a mistake to send shlichim out to Auckland, New Zealand, and say, your quality of Jewish life is lousy. You need to live in Israel. You don't have, you know, I think you could say to them, Israel is a wonderful thing. You should definitely come for a year in university or Massah, whatever is the thing. Come check it out. And Israel should be part of your life and you should feel connected to it. But I don't think we have to come and, and uh, at least the way that I was indoctrinated in young Judea, to be told that uh, if you don't move to Israel, you're not worth a whole lot as a human being. I think that's a mistake. I think that is an ideology whose time has passed. Uh, and environmentally, I think just doesn't, it doesn't work for me either. And w without, without, <coughs> without canceling the embrace for anybody who doesn't.